to the BC is I'm still, as I've said before in this forum, um, still working out what's happening to me when I'm going into a court. Um, I'm in martial law of some description and historically where is that martial law coming from? And what I mean by martial law is, um, I don't just mean admiralty, I mean the country is in a state of war and we have an occupier and the, the term judge uh, there's a, you know, a lot of the system we have comes from the Hebrew system, and I can't remember the name for, for the borrowing system we've got a shekel, shekel. Shekel. Uh, no, it, it's um, there's, there's a name for the system of uh, borrowing that we have today, and it's it's a Jewish system. Usury. Usury. No. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. Um, the term judge, um, the etymology of judge is many things but um, because I've, I've been to court now about 40 times with myself, I've been a lot myself and I've been a lot with other people, uh, Mike Dobson uh, and vice versa, Roger Hayes, various other people I've been to court with and um, I noticed that the judge plays these different roles but there's one thing consistent is he is vested with all this power and the only thing that worked was when um, I um, I went in as the executor of the trust. So the only thing that worked and um, dismissed the, the dismissed, KV trust. Dismissed the trust. Yeah, that's what I used. Um, so you know, I'm not interested in what trolls say or what critics say, um, and I'm not too bothered about the cess to KV. What I want to focus on tonight is process of registration. I've talked about it before on the forums, but we're going down a bit of a red herring with the registrar. At the act of registration, you've already been registered. You've already been put on as a performance bond onto the stock market. That's a fact. Your baby is probably already lined up in, in, in gestation um, on, on, this, um, on this performance bond market, you know, going to see your midwife, going to, for the appointments, it's already there, it's already lined up. Then when the thing drops or your baby drops and you give life, immediately, the immediate moment that happens, the midwife puts you into um, a book, a doomsday book it was described to me, and I went to an old midwife and a a senior college lecturer, she was also a senior college lecturer, so I could really ascertain the facts because I'm aware that they're listening to our audios and they're making changes constantly and trying to close gaps. Um, so I went to see, to get the historical evidence and where I could look at the original rationale and she said that if she didn't actually fill in your, um, your details of being born and the parents she would be fined and she had to pay £54, which was a lot of money, you know, We're talking thousands, the equivalent of. And she said she remembered having to do that when some gypsies, um, travellers came in and um, just got off with the baby. Um, so it was, you know, th there's a lot of onus on this, this woman to, to, get, to get your birth um, down. So that's the point, I, I put it to you that the bond is actually made. But you know, then people go, no, but they don't know what your name is. Um, but when, when they know what your name is, a different set of bonds are made. So at the, if they never know what your name is, they will still trade because you're down as a number somewhere and you exist on this land. So whoever's using your, um, your um, resources from that birth is still going to trade even if your name doesn't exist. So what they did was they said, right, well, we need to be able to identify this person so that we can have big bonds. We've got performance bonds now um, off the birth and, and the gestation, but now we want big bonds. We want to be able to bid on the likelihood of being able to make money off your sweat and equity throughout your life. You could end up being a, a star player footballer. Anything you could end prime up, minister. You could end up being, uh, yeah, and you could end up being on the dole, whatever you are, or you could end up being in prison. You're worth money. And believe it or not, you're worth a lot of money in prison. Um, 
and you and I've seen this I've seen this stuff and other people in this room have seen seen this stuff and if you speak to the right stop brokers you'll see it yourself so I won't be told that it doesn't exist and it's never existed and it's a load of rubbish and I'm not interested in people who just want to cash it because uh, that's not what I'm making this point for I'm trying to work out what the law is and how I can be free that's what I want um, so that's that's the process there now when you're trying to 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 become free from the name it doesn't matter because the, the name is irrelevant because you've already been bonded as a number to the parents that's why the family name is important because they can get you from your family name or where you live as, as we know all these different things and we know that you've signed yourself into an adhesion contract when you sign for a driver's license, when you sign for, um, most importantly, your SIN, your national insurance number, um, you are agreeing then. Because you know these people who are saying, I'm not the name, I'm not the date of birth, I wasn't there. Well, then that's fine. You can get away with the contract up to that point. But then you've gone and, you've gone and, uh, giving yourself an adhesion contract by putting yourself, giving your date of birth and, and, give, and getting a number back in return. That's an adhesion contract. And on that adhesion contract, more bonds are made, more performance bonds, more bid bonds. And there's another type of bond, which is, the name escapes me for the, for the moment. But three types of bonds are traded off you, depending on the pensions for the, for the gambler um, who's wanting to make money off you. And it is just people sitting there on a computer screen and deciding, well, I'm going to make money off that particular number. So they don't need, they don't need your name. And it won't be your name that comes up. It'll be your number. When I'm trying to sort of break free of the shackles and I'm saying I'm not a name, that's a waste of time. What I need to know is, is that I'm the number and I use that number, right? Which brings me neatly on to where I've been with my um, electricity and gas. Four years of negotiation, and they were originally sent an A for V, which as far as I'm concerned, they've received and agreed, but they have no record of that. Did they ever send the check gyro bit off the bottom back to you? No, that's, that's um, I've received something from, from somebody in, the, in, in, my, in my email recently this week about that, but that was on, on TPUC three years ago that about this EDF thing, and it's not correct. Once the, the bond has been sent, which is the A for V, and they accept it, as you know, Mark, it's accepted, it's a nonsense. And you go to court, you cannot, now, that's why I stressed a judge, I didn't say this actually, a judge means in he who is vested with, he who wears the vest of armaments. That's what judge means. It's one of the interpretations of what a judge is. And as I said at the start of my talk, what are we in? We're in martial law. So we're going to somebody who's the Colonel Blink, basically, and we're asking him his opinion. And now, okay, most of them have got these big books and very kind of serene, cerebral approach to us. But at the end of the day, and I've always said this, he's just making it up as he goes along. And so are you. There's three of you in this trinity. There's prosecution, you, and the judge. And he's got his books, and you've got your books, and he or she's, your opponent's got his books. And it's, he will sit there and decide. And it doesn't matter what it is. Even with a jury, he will direct that jury because he is, we are in a military court, we're in a canon law jurisdiction all the time. The judge is the one with the ultimate power, and the ju jury get directed what to say, what to think, and they do get a choice um, in criminal law where the harm has been done. Um, but if you've got, if you go go to some crown court cases and watch how the judge sways the jury with his logic, that's not to me what I understand to be restorative justice, where the community decide where the community think for themselves and listen to the to the people who've been transgressed and the, uh, and the transgressor. It's a very different approach. 
and you, you just need to look at primitive tribes and, and experience that. And there's plenty of stuff on the internet now, and you'll see the difference. You, it, you are dead. This man has all this power. We're giving all this power over to him. Who gives him the power? We, who, gives, who gives that judge your the power? You, your parents give him the power when they inform him. Says, who is the informant here? And it, the informant is whoever, and it can be yeah. anybody, but it sure. can be the midwife, who tells you what that child's name is. Because as soon as they've got the name and the surname, they are going to put big bonds onto that, to that entity. And all its life, it's going to be dogged by various kinds of big bonds and performance bonds against its, against its energy. Don't they play the game with us? I think if the arguments are strong enough, the judge has not got no power. Who gives who gives anybody the right to make judgments over your affairs? Not if you're the executive, no. Nobody gives nobody has got the right of your affairs. Nobody except you. It doesn't matter who he is or who they are or what status they are. They have not got no power over you whatsoever unless you give it to them. Okay, so let's get to this. I'm going to move neatly on to this, this, these big bonds, okay? Because on this system of, and I've been very careful to point out what's going on at your birth and how they just take stuff off you. Because tonight I've had a phone call off a member of this group who's normally here, and he's stressed. He's had police come to his house and they've stolen his car. And they've, I've said under what authority, and they've said the DVLA authority. I said, under what authority have they stolen your car? Oh, you've stolen your method of transport and uh, uh, method of, of travelling. And he said, they just said DVLA and uh, they, they, they came to um, and instructed him to take the car. So did he got the officer's name? Yes, he has. But basically, under the DVLA, that's the authority. I can't, I don't, there may be some DVLA law. But it'll be something under the road traffic tax, no Could doubt. It, wouldn't, it, wouldn't that be a civil, civil matter and not a criminal matter? No, because do you remember if we started the conversation, we've started the talk, I've talked about we're under martial law. And if we're under martial law, what are we? Prisoners. We're prisoners of war, aren't we? And what happens to prisoners of war? They can be executed, they can be starved. They have to, have to they just get the bare minimum to live off. I mean, people are talking about being slaves, but I think prisoners of war sounds about right. You know, no rights basically. Somebody's just come up and said, well, under the DBLA, we we're, we're stealing your property. To remind us we've got no fucking rights. <laughs> I, I don't see your logic there. That's why we drive on the left. We're just playing with words. Yeah. It's true though, isn't it? We just like to be different in this country and Australia, I think they also drive on the left. So they basically they've come and take this property. They've come and take this property under the authority of the DBLA, but they don't even need that. They really don't, because who's he going to go to? He's going to go to a man vested with armaments yeah. and say, please Mr. Vested with armaments, can you give me my property back please? And he's going to go, and what law do you want me to consider? And he's going to say, well, I want you to consider my human rights under Article 12 and under Article 25. I want you to consider the Magna Carta under 39. And the judge is going to say, well, and what law do you want me to not give him the car back? And he's going to say, well, under the Road Traffic Act, he committed offence. He did not have tax. It's not insurance, this guy. He didn't have tax on his car. Who do you think that man vested in armaments is going to choose? The one who is in the same pot as his prosecution. First and foremost, what they look at is how much is that going to cost to go and put before a, a court or a. Or, you know, how, how much money would it actually cost to, him to come to an agreement on what they've done there? More than his cars were. Well, I'll give you a bit of history away. of everybody in this country. They took and his car away for a hundred and... And what's he got to pay? A hundred and sixty odd pounds to get it back. He's got to pay a hundred and twenty pounds per or, day. Or the option 
The other option is we crush it. And we might have a thousand quid invested in that vehicle. So the option is he had to pay £162 to get his car back or let them crush it. He's got to pay £220 by the time he gets it back because he's got to wait till tomorrow now to go and get the tax disc. The, the, but he's, he's, he's got some sort of insurance so, on so it because it's only a month. Quid. So it, it, he's got to pay back insurance, which is a month. And then so all, they, they all seem the to want this man years. badly. They seem to just want to. They just seem to want to be. And it's the same with Norman, who's gone to jail for six months. They seem to want to be really flexing their muscles right now and saying, you know what? We're it, and you're not. I'm, I'm, I'm being well, filmed, but you know, there's a word that rhymes with it, wear it and you're... Oh shit! Yeah. I agree and with there's that. a way out of it. There's a way out of it. But it's not his vehicle. It's not his, but how, so how does he get his property back? What he does is he plays the game, basically. Bear in mind that... Oh, no, I, I, that's I, what said I've this before, to. I said this before, but no, but I will say this now. I want everybody to just listen to what I'm saying. I might repeat myself, but listen to what I'm saying. It's a game. You play the game, or you don't. It's simple. He's got to move. It's a chessboard. He's got to log in. You've just, yeah, you've just created this, this new uh, way of getting money. Logbook loans, it's called. Who owns the car first and foremost? The DVLA. You are only the registered keeper. If they're going to give you money for the lobby, get it. And let them have the lobby. Because, you know, if they send you the bill, what you do with the bill, you send this to the DVLA. Because it's not your vehicle. You are just a registered keeper. It's not yours. That's one remedy. Right? You're not in no contact with anybody whatsoever. Get a thousand quid back for the car, which is worth. Pay £162, get the car back, run round it. When they decide, well, you haven't paid the car money back, they'll come and take the car back. They can't because it's, you can't collect it. Well, I want to try a different way. I want to. I want to. I, 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 I think that's again. too complicated. I, I, and, it, and it's criminal and it's fraud. And why play their game? I'd rather go for all the people who are watching this, and there's a lot of us who've um, had their car stolen, or I shouldn't use that word, but I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to use it in terms of commercial redemption because there's a lot of stuff in equity where what they're doing is wrong anyway. So a specious contract, coming to, the, the contract, I, I was very careful to say, you didn't tell me what this contract was from the start. You didn't inform me. My parents informed you of my birth. You didn't inform me that when I signed for a national insurance number that you would treat me in this yeah, manner and that I, was a, that I was a prisoner of the state and that you would leave me to virtually starving. If you didn't take it off me through my car, then you would take it off me through this now, now because they've taken everything off me personally. So now that's not enough. We're going to take it off her with her fuel. Which again, I, I, I haven't paid because it's a choice of eating or paying the fuel, and so I choose to 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 to, to go and sit in the library and keep warm and use as minimum amount. But I, I've been throwing it back to them constantly. This um, A for V stuff. I sent them a, a, a conditional offer and an A for V, um, and we've been toing and froing and toing and froing. They've taken me to court, as I said. No, I don't think I've said this to this group, but they took me to court and I asked for help. That's how I ended up getting to meet all you lot. And um, I think Mark, 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 Mark's friend in Nottingham introduced me to you lot. And that day, six coppers turned up with three cars. And that was, I don't know what they were planning to do to me, but I've since found out that the... Um, the gas and electricity board, um, NPower, actually hadn't taken me to court. They sent me a notice and they sent me a summons with all my human rights on it, that, that they're supposed to do. And when the court were contacted, there's, there's actually no court case, but yet they've charged me nearly £500 in charges for this. Which they're racking up because they've been sent an A for V. And they're collecting on it. I know this. But the more you're in debt, the, the, the better these big bombs become. 
left and the more money they're making off me. Now, I, I, I personally can't go on with it, so therefore I feel there's a lot of people with, in the same situation with their utilities, and there's a lot of people in the same situation with having their house stolen off them, and there's a lot of people in the same situation with having their car stolen off them. And I think really it's a class action suite, a lot of people together, and that way, you know, they can't start cherry picking people off and saying you're going to jail, you're going to down for six months. Because I've actually had that. I've looked, my eyebrows gone a bit strange and it's screaming contempt at me. Now this contempt of court is another thing, it's being abused. The only thing that you can be put into contempt of court is getting up and punching the man wearing his vestment. It's not about um, um, disobedience and if it is then it's martial law isn't it it's just like Nazi Germany and getting out the gun and cherry picking people off and just shooting them because that's what's happening in courts in England and, 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 and I've had these people say you're not doing it in my court you're not doing this in my country you're not going to get away with what they're getting away with in Canada you're not going to get away with it in, in England um, you're not going to get away with this. Has anybody, has anybody actually researched the word contempt to find out what contempt actually is? I mean, is it is contempt an offence? How it's, can, it's how an how an how an can somebody be, be affected by, by con, a word contempt if, if, if there's no definition of contempt? What is contempt? It's got to be explained. It's, not the, nine, it's the 1981 Act that they're using. Yeah, but contempt, it's, it's got to have it. Got to have an explanation. You can't have a word. You can't. You can't convict somebody of, of something with, without an explanation. But if you can't just create something, say, that's contempt. Unless you can that's what she's explain saying, is that what, what judge, is contempt. That's what she's saying. That the judges are playing their own game and making it obviously go along. I, what? No. What? Basically, I'm, not doing contempt means you're not doing what, what I want contempt? you to do. What's the legal de definition of contempt? The legal definition of contempt is going against what somebody, what the established norm Dis is. A disagreement. Um, that's what we're saying. Disagreement. No, it's more than that. It means it means being dishonourable, basically. It means that. But it's a it's, it's for a slave. It's a polite word it's, for dishonour. No, it's not a polite word because dishonour is for officers. Contempt is for slaves. Contempt is for these prisoners of war. Basically, if you're in the army and you're a private and you're going up to a general and you don't obey his orders and do what he's told you to do, then it's disobedience and he's going to throw you into the military jail without any no no what, trial, what? nothing he straight be, away and hard legal, labour. There must be a legal definition. So basically you're showing disrespect. So if you don't you, sit up when they say sit you, up disrespect to an authority. If you don't sit up when you say they say, well, if they don't jump when they say how high it's disrespect. Again it's just it's a creation it's not, of it. it's, it's, it's not something that's like, it is actually false imprisonment under the law of this land. But they're using the law of the land in uh, legal land, legalese, and they're putting it in the papers. He has not obeyed the law of this land. And the and police believe the law of the land is a statute, obviously. But if you look at the ancient law books, it has to be a serious misdemeanor, and for an officer to transgress his office is an equally serious misdemeanor. And as far as I'm concerned, if he cannot prove his authority over me, and by that proving it, then he's created that misdemeanour and he should suffer the due consequence of that. But again, my argument in this way, going back to this way, content, what we just, what the, the definitions of that and what we've got there, there's still an argument for that because it's only some, what someone's creating. Well, it's not necessarily, it's not, it's not it's necessarily not what someone's created. It's basically when you're going into a court, you're dealing with a man with the vestments of armature. You're going into no, an no, army no. court. If you agree with what they're saying to you, then it's what it is. Right? But if you don't, it's what it's not. You agree from the minute you enter that building. You're agreeing to the terms of the contract. Which is why it's important to understand that you need to break the original contract and go in there is something different. What? 
do, do we have to go there? Why can't I? If, 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 they're, if they're addressing you by mail, as you say, why, why do we have to go there? Why can't we do in mail form? Can I just answer? We love writing letters to them and do it. We can. But they, they come and steal your why car. Why but they come in, all day because they're stealing our property, Stuart. They're stealing the houses. They're ste that's all people are bothered about. Is they're stealing their children. They're I'm stealing not, their, 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 their houses. They're stealing their property that they're working from. They're destroying their livelihood. They're saying, we want money for the gas and electricity that you use. We want money for the roads. We, and it, it's, it's just going on and on and on and on and on. And it's all under the guise of public, which also means slave. In, in um, contempt, individuals may be cited for contempt when they disobey an order. I know. I, 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 Fail to comply with a I request. Tamper with documents. We're not in the army. Are we? And all this. Who's entitled to give us orders? There's nobody in here can give us any of anybody in order. Going back to the initial point she's making, we're under martial law. Otherwise, defy a public authority or hold it up to ridicule and disrespect. Public, a slave authority. Public means slave. That's what it means. Well, so basically, we've just got to accept. We've just got to accept what's what. Or, or we can say, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute here. If you're out and about, if you're out and about, and something's not right, you say something, don't you? The laws, are, the laws and rules governing contempt are developed in a peaceful fashion. But for some fashion. reason, other, we can't do that because of this. Because of these words. It's all words that they're using against us. It's, it, they're knocking us down by words and, and it's all poetry. They're knocking you down by your words. agreement. And they're knocking us down but now what by force. Yeah, I, 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 the use of force and the power of words, which so, we don't quite understand yet, but once we do. So that probably needs to be, because that's what's going on with the, the utilities now. Um, and really I say now, it's, I think everyone around the world is getting to the point where I don't think going out and stamping on the streets is, is no longer the, the, the solution. But I said again together on mass and saying, we're not dealing with this. We're not putting up with this. It's going to have to be the way because I can't go into court on my own now. It's not safe for me to do that. Not with six, six coming to my house and another day with guns. We've got to remember that the original index offence was to do with having no insurance on a parked car, which I was trying to wrest from them from stealing. And because I was trying to grab hold of my car, they said I was using the car, which makes it so much worse. So this was my oh, original did, did you, offense you that they needed, <laughs> they needed to send armed police to my house. I can't say anything. I'm a, I, I'm a, a fine, upstanding citizen. They can't, they can't make this stuff upon me. They're like they're making up about other people, about them beating up. They've put in my, that, that she punched me. It's a load of rubbish. They can't make any justification for coming to my house, a woman living on her own. With, with guns, and coming six of them mob handed, they can't make any justification for that. Except to treat us as though we are the enemy. Oh, because 300 of you did it to one of our judges, with Roger Hayes. 600. Well, six, I think it was 800 actually. It kind of keeps growing this figure. Are we the enemy? Uh, well, no, but that's not how they're making it, and it's terrorism now, and it's, it's they've, up the, they've up the ballpark. And they're compromising us from being peaceful into reacting. We've no longer got honour now where we can go in and, and speak honourably to these people as individuals. We can in numbers, as long as we've got the right questions to ask. Well, I think we need to all, you know, seriously, if, you if, you want, if you're interested in a class action suit on, on, the, on, the, on the matter of um, cars, and get in contact with us on Freedom Northwest. If you're interested in the a, a class action suite on the matter of mortgages, then get in touch on Get Out of Debt Free or thinkfree.org.uk. Well, if you've got any better ideas than we are. Um, well, what, but, but the, I, I think we've probably thought of them. There's the two there, but what, that suggestion you've come up with, Stuart, will just be closed.
they'll just up the, the shift the goalposts, they will make it impossible or you can't do a fifty thousand before they'll give you a loan. They won't they won't in the it's a, it's about numbers, numbers. The one we can't do we cannot do this physically. We cannot do this the only way we can achieve what we need to achieve is by using the power of the knowledge that we gain collectively and putting that together and using that as the base to survival of this world and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. It's about gathering as much knowledge as we can and expressing that knowledge to as many people as we can so they can survive when we're not here to give that knowledge to what people I, Before need. I hand over to say that this knowledge that we all have now was passed down to us by a banker. A banker who wanted his nation to be free. Now I smell a rat there, personally. Um, it originally all came, all this, um, all this get out of debt free stuff that you see, all these sort of contracts and you know, show me the original contract. It was passed by somebody who ratted on the banks um, and turncoated. Now I don't believe that's the case. I believe... It happened to Charlie Beach and he worked for the banks. This is done a flip flop. I believe. I don't believe that there's been a flip flop from some turn, from a turncoat. I believe it's been handed to us deliberately. I believe it's been handed to, to us to create a war. They can't create the war. They can't win hearts and minds with what they're doing in Libya. So they want to create a world war, a world revolution, and a change of heart. And this has been forced on us. It's too brutal, it's too heavy the way it's happening. And we're being given solutions. They've taken the power off the GPs, they've taken the power off the judges. We've got the judges' books now. We can we can get all this online. So people who have this power no longer have the power anymore. And this is chaos, which is designed. It's not just happened organically, it's been delivered to us deliberately by the few who control the many. So you might want to think about that. Thanks. Uh, just a brief pay for fee update down in Nottingham. Um, a couple of weeks back, one of the lads has been pay for fee his gas and electric. Um, we're in court because they were trying to get a warrant of entry to uh, fit a prepayment meter. While he was in court, they actually broke into his house and fitted a big meter anyway. This was before they'd even got a warrant. And the judge had also ordered that he had 14 days um, to issue a protest. We obviously he said what he'd done, um, but they still went ahead and did that anyway. Interestingly though, he's, uh, he's with the same company for both gas and electric. And it did, it, I, I can be both gas and electric, yet they only changed the gas. Um, it, when, it, when it went to the police to report it... Too complicated to change the electric, that's why it takes a lot of effort. When it went to the police to report it, to they, they said it's a civil matter and there's nothing they can do. Uh, I don't know what he's been up to since then, but that's it. That's, it. that's the only one we know at the moment. Um, I mean, I, I, I've been through it. And it all went the way it's supposed to have gone for me. Uh, but this is a, it's certainly a, an interesting turn. But you've also, like me, found out that they didn't actually take it to court, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's that actually is unlawful. Yeah. And I don't mean in terms of free man on the land unlawful. I mean equity unlawful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So they're technically in breach. So. What's to stop you changing it all back, back to the way it was? Well, interestingly, recently we've been doing some research into the Northampton Bulk Centre and we've found that the warrants of execution for the issue, it actually states in the paperwork we've got now, it states that the, the Traffic Enforcement Centre issued them. And the Traffic Enforcement Centre isn't a court. Yeah, we've done that for a long time. But they will claim that it is working under the branch of Northampton Air. However, it's absolutely not. So, um, 
we've actually sent some uh, paperwork off pointing out this fact, um, and it will be interesting to see where that one goes. Well, if you go back to the original thing that you're not on on a in a martial law situation, where the people who rule the show tell you what to do, what does it matter? Well, yeah, well, it is a martial law. I mean, I think it was, a, it was something they did in about. 1912, something around there, which we said they were uh, martial law against us. But it was a quiet sort of martial law. It's not quiet though, is it? It's massage. Yeah, it's right there on the, uh, what you were just saying. Well, I, I watched a video the other week um, regarding about the Bowman Centre, well, you know, like what you just said about that. And there was an admittance by the worker stating that they were not. But we're found to be acting as a court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there was an admittance there. So just, just put a man off that one. Yeah, I heard a recording where a woman found up and got all the info. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's known, but again, it needs to be out there. Just because we know it doesn't mean that, unfortunately, everyone else does.